You post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Patsy, you're magnificent. Well, thanks. You've just solved the mystery. All we've got to do now is catch the killer. Oh, but how do we do that, Nick? By turning you into a ghost. By turning me into a what? Patsy, I'm going to make you up into the scariest ghost that was ever seen. And tonight, you're going to haunt a chess club. Now for the case of the jeweled queen. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter... Brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. In his small basement apartment, cluttered with chess books and chess sets, old Jeremy Hawthorne sits over a chessboard and listens absently while two hard-eyed men talk to him. Will you listen to me, Hawthorne? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Mr... He told you his name twice already, pal. This here's my boss, Mr. Monk. Uh, oh, yes, yes, Mr. Munn. I swear if you don't pay attention, I'll... I'll do, Cruz. Okay. Yes, yes. Bishop to queen, bishop four. Oh, the only possible move. Unless, uh, knight to rook five. Hawthorne, I got a thousand dollars for you, eh? What's that? Well, a thousand dollars? What? Yeah, they woke him up. Look, you remember the old National Chess Club, the old marble mansion on East 20th? Uh, oh, yes, do I not. <laughs> I'm the last surviving member. Ah, what great old days we had at the club. And it's been closed now for, let me see... For 40 see. years, and it's been falling to pieces all that time. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, if it hadn't been for that terrible scandal, the club would still Look, be... Look, I'm not interested in the club or its scandals. I'm interested in you. Oh? Oh, you're a chess player, Mr... No, no, I'm the guy with a thousand bucks. I'll pay it to you. But, uh, for what? For your right title and interest in the club. <laughs> My dear sir, <laughs> you're cheating yourself. There isn't anything in the club but old books and old furniture. Hardly worth fifty dollars, let alone. Look, I'll pay you a thousand dollars for everything in the building. Everything that's your property is the last surviving member. All you have to do is sign this release. Oh, Mr. Monk, this is ridiculous. The place is a liability. Look, it may be so, Hawthorne. You just sign the paper and take this thousand dollars. I'll take the liability. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Patsy, I haven't asked you to marry me for over two weeks. How about it? Oh, please, Gubby. Don't you ever get tired of hearing me say no? Why, Patsy, I... Hey, Nick! Nick, stop the car, quick! Stop me for the... What's the matter? I just remembered something. A murder? Oh, you yelled as though there were ten murders. With arson thrown in. Oh, Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I just remembered old man Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Yeah, he lives right here. That basement apartment. Scubby, who, what, and why is old man Hawthorne? He's a guy I play chess with by mail. Oh, oh, now I've heard everything. No, no kidding, Patsy. I'm up to my neck in a red-hot correspondence game with Hawthorne. <laughs> and I just remembered I forgot to mail him my latest move. <laughs> okay, get back in the car, chess champion. We're late for dinner already. I'll lend you a postcard. Well, take a second, Nick. I'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> He'd probably fling open the door and howl, check. <laughs> And scare old man Hawthorne to death. <laughs> oh, um, Patsy, did I ever tell you the story about the man who won a chess game because he couldn't talk cannibal? Uh-uh. Another Nick Carter special on the way. It seems this man was captured by cannibals down in New Guinea. Uh-huh. And while they were boiling the pot... Hey, Nick! This... Hey! Oh, that's Scubby. What's the matter with him? Oh, it doesn't sound as though he's making a chess move, either. Hey, Nick! Nick, you got to come into Hawthorne's place right away. This is awful. What's the matter, Scubby? You need advice on your next move? I'll say I do. Hawthorne's dead. Oh! He's committed suicide. <laughs> No doubt 
about it. Hawthorne's dead, all right. He climbed up on a chair and hanged himself from one of the water pipes. But why, Nick? Scubby says he didn't have a problem in the world. Well, not outside of chess. Well, he just lived for his chess problems. The old guy was happy. He yes. wouldn't... Yes. That's what's bothering me. Why? Look at this note Hawthorne apparently left here on the chess table. Neatly printed in ink. I'm 80 years old and I'm tired. Chess is a bore. There's nothing left. Nick... Why did you say Hawthorne apparently left the note? Because the note is printed in ink. So what? Hawthorne's got an ink stain on his forefinger. True enough, Scubby. But tell me this. Where's the ink bottle? The what? The bottle of ink. And the pen Hawthorne used. Or the fountain pen. Or anything that'll write in ink. Holy smoke, you're right. I've been through this room thoroughly, and there isn't any ink. So how could Hawthorne write that note? Well, maybe there's a pen in his pocket. No, no, I've searched him. There's nothing on it but some small change and a handkerchief. Then he didn't write that note. No, Scubby, he positively did not. Some kind friend obligingly wrote that note for Hawthorne with his own pen and then kindly helped Hawthorne commit suicide. What? You mean that someone murdered him? Go to the head of the class, Fancy. Oh. But he was harmless. Why would anyone want to kill a nice old man like that? That, Scubby, is what I'd like to find out. So would I. Where do we start? Well, here's the picture as I see it. Now, someone was here with Hawthorne just before he was murdered. Uh Uh-huh. Someone who had the pen that Hawthorne used to write with. Accounting for the ink stain on the finger. Right. But what did Hawthorne write? Well, certainly not the suicide note. That was written for him after he was killed. Now, when this... Hey, this is interesting. Hmm? What? Here on the floor, under Hawthorne's feet... The rhinestone medallion, see? With a letter M in the center. A medallion with a letter M? Recognize it, Scubby? Sure I do. That's from the Club Monk. The nightclub on the west side? Yeah. There's a dancer there named Jenny Valentine. She does a solo tap dance and throws these souvenirs to the customers. Oh, but what would an old chess player be doing in a nightclub catching souvenirs? You mean, what would a nightclub dancer be doing in Hawthorne's rooms playing chess? Nick, maybe that medallion's the key to this murder. Could be, Scubby. Hey, look, you kids stand by and wait for Matty in the homicide squad. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going down to the monk club and try to catch a souvenir. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I've let you on. Mr. Monk? Mr. Monk? Oh, hiya, Hopkins. Come on in. Is... Is it okay, Mr. Monk? Is what okay? Well, the money I owe you, the five grand. Oh, uh, no. But I, I told you how to get the queen, didn't you believe me? Yeah. Well, did you see Hawthorne? Did you buy it from him? You owe the club 6000 now. Well, what do you mean? Now, listen, Sonny. You come here to the club and you drop five grand. You can't pay, so you hand me a story about this, this bequest your uncle left to the chess club. Well, it's true. I swear it. The club was closed before they had a chance to find out what he gave them. They never knew what they had. Mr. Monk, that queen is worth $20,000, maybe thirty. Okay, okay. Well, that was the deal of... If I steered you into it, you'd cancel the money I owe you. Listen, punk, the word was if. Yes, but you said... I I haven't got the queen yet. It cost me another grand already. If I get it, you're clear. Get that through your head, Hopkins. I don't sucker so easy for fancy stories. Well, sure, but after all, I went to... Mom! Mom! Quit yelling, will you? Everybody in the club can hear you. You're making so much noise. Oh, hiya, Jenny. Hello, Hoppy. Hello. Oh. Hoppy, don't you love me anymore? No. Now, that's a man for you. Chasing after me for three months solid. And all of a sudden, boom, the freeze. Don't be mad at me, Hoppy. You played me for a sucker, Jenny. Five thousand dollars worth of sucker. Why, Hoppy? Go ahead and grin. <laughs> I'm going to the bar, and I hope I never see you again. Go ahead. <laughs> Monk, baby. Yeah? Get the dope from Hawthorne? Yeah, everything's okay, honey. 
When do we get the queen? Tonight, baby. I'm going over with Cruz. Are you gonna... Are you gonna take care of it? Mm-hmm. You just leave that to me, honey. From tomorrow on, it's just gonna be you and me and 40 grand. Oh, God, Mom. Look, uh, better go up to your dressing room now. Cruz may get ideas if he sees us. Huh? Say it again. Say it again about you and me, Monk. You and me and 40 grand. Oh, honey. You say the sweetest things. Smells like a perfume factory. Hope I don't asphyxiate before she's through with her den. told me it'd be all right to wait in your dressing room. Oh. Oh. Are you, uh, shall we say, uh, an admirer? Perhaps. In a way. Oh. You're very good looking. You, um, like my dance? I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. Well, what are you hanging around my dressing room for? Miss Valentine, I'm Nick Carter. The detective? That's right. Now get out of here. I'm not quite ready to leave yet, Miss Valentine. I'd like to ask you about this medallion. Well, what about it? Why'd you give it to Jeremy Hawthorne? Jeremy Hawthorne? Uh, hey, hey, look, I... I throw hundreds of those things around every night, but... How should I know who catches them? Of course, Miss Valentine, but you do know Hawthorne. But I throw... Don't him. deny it. You showed it on your face when I mentioned his name. Get out of here. I came up here to ask you what you know about a chess player who had the misfortune... Janet to... Carter, I'll ask the questions around here. Oh, hello, Monk. Do I also say hello to the 45 you're playing with? Make one fancy play, Carter, and you can get intimate with a slug. Don't you knock when you sneak into dressing rooms? A no. Besides, you and I are going to sneak right out. Monk, I think now, you look, sh- this is my play, Jenny. Let me take it. Okay, okay, now, but this... Get on your feet, Carter. We're going up to my office. All right. It's nice and soundproof up there. We can play just as rough as you want to. And if you want to play some parlor games, that's all right, too. Uh, just one game I'm not in the mood for, Monk. Oh, what's that? Two men played with a gun or a rope. It's called Murder. was right in his guess that Hawthorne was known to both Jenny and Monk. We'll see where that leads him in just a moment when we hear what Monk has to tell him in his private soundproof office. Now, back to the case of the Jeweled Queen. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. At the point of a gun, Nick is ushered into Monk's soundproof office on the second floor of the Monk Club, Monk closes the door sharply and... Sit down, Carter. Thanks. Now listen, I had trouble with you before. I know you're a smart cookie and I know you're dangerous. That's why I use a rod when you're around. Put your cards on the table, Monk. Carter, this is one deal that's on the level. What deal? The deal with Hawthorne. Oh? Well, this is very interesting. Go ahead, Monk. Sing your song. Well, a rich kid named Hopkins got in the red for me for five grand. So? So he couldn't pay. And so his old man wouldn't hand over the dough. So Hopkins steers me into a deal to square it. What deal? You going for history, any? I've read a book or two. Well, get a load of this. Back in the 1500s, there was this English queen, Elizabeth. 
I've heard of her. Well, now, there was a tournament held in her honor once, a kind of uh, joust. Now, Elizabeth was impressed with a way a guy by the name of uh, Sir Charles Blunt fought. She was so impressed that she sent him a present the next day. A chess piece. It was a jeweled queen. I think I've read the story. Well, now, according to the books, Essex was so jealous of the gift. He ups and fights a duel with Blunt, and afterwards, the chess queen disappeared. So I've heard. Now, Carter, that queen's worth a fortune, and I own it. All legal, all fair, all square. How so? Well, Hopkins' uncle uncovered it 50 years ago. He sent it to the National Chess Club as a bequest, along with some books and stuff. Well? But he died right after that. Then the club went bust before they knew what they owned. That jewel queen is stored away somewhere in the club cellar. And you own it? I do. Mm. I bought it fair and square from the last living club member, old Jeremiah Hawthorne. I got the bill of sale to the club property signed by him this afternoon for a thousand bucks. So that's how he got the ink stain on his finger. What? Uh, nothing. Now, tonight I'm going down to the clubhouse and get what I own. All legal and above board, right? Except for one little detail, Monk. Name it. Somebody murdered Hawthorne. Well, I... Get out of here. It's a dirty double-crossing fight. Hawthorne's been murdered, and he didn't have a thousand dollars on him. I told you to get out, and if you know what's good for you, Carter, don't try to hang this rap on me. I won't have to, Monk. I'll just help you hang it on yourself. Your hat, Mr. Carter? Thanks. Don't you like the Monk Club, Mr. Carter? Sure, sure. like it fine. But I don't like the people in it. Good night. Good night, Mr. Carter. Come again soon. Just a minute. What? Well... Mr. Alfred Cruz, isn't it? How are you, Alfred? Last time we met... Carter, what do you want with Jenny? Take your hand off me, Alfred. What was you doing in Jenny's dressing room? Don't see why that's any of your business. It sure is. She's going to be my wife. Is that so? When? In a couple of months. She's a beautiful kid. Everybody's chasing her. Like that kid Hopkins, even Monk. I don't want you around her, too. I have no intentions of chasing her, Alfred. Now, will you please get out of my way? You don't bluff me with fancy talk, Carter. I swear I'll break your neck if you go near her. If you want a sample... You don't step aside, Alfred. Yeah, I'll... see how you like this. I really hate to do this, Alfred, but... <laughs> when you get up again, I hope you'll have more sense. Hey, Nick! Nick, come over to your car, quick. What's the matter, Scubby? I was coming down to meet you, and I saw your car just on. Well, take a look inside. You don't tell me you've discovered an... Good heavens! It's Jenny Valentine. Dead! Then Jenny Valentine. Oh, stop pacing, Nick. You're making the office whirl around in circles. Nick, I'm scared. Why'd you bring Jenny back in the car? Why haven't you reported her murder to Maddie? I'm going to just as soon as I figure this out. Oh, but Nick... Maybe I was meant to find her and report it. But she's still out in your car. If anybody finds her... I know, I know, I know. Found it. She was in the back seat with her neck twisted, strangled as though she'd come to the car and was waiting to speak to me after I left the club. Only the killer came along and spoke to her first. Nick, you've got to do something. I know, I know I do. That's why I'm trying to think. Well, my money's on Monk. He's our meat. Maybe. Oh, uh, did Jenny tell you anything that could help? No. Although she was friendly enough till she found out who I was. (laughs) This I already know. How? Oh, I know a clue when I see it. See that big smudge of powder and makeup she left on Nick's sleeve? Powder and makeup on my... Patsy, you're magnificent. You've solved the case. I've solved... You've just told me who murdered Hawthorne and Jenny Valentine. Now all we've got to do is catch him. But, but, but how? By turning you into a ghost. By turning me into a what? Patsy, I'm going to make you up into the scariest ghost that was ever seen. And tonight, you're going to haunt a chess club. <laughs> I 
gets hot can guess right, Cruz. And all through this old chess club. Stuff must be stored down in the cellar. Okay, come on. Look, uh, Hawthorne said it's in a big packing case. It's stenciled Hopkins. Yeah, it is, if the rats ain't ate the print off. <laughs> Well, rats can eat books, but they can't eat golden diamonds. You keep telling yourself. No, no, no. Take it easy. This is the bottom. Hey, flash around your light. Huh? Hey, Mark. Yeah? Over there against the wall. See? On that case. It says Hopkins. Okay, come on. Fall on the pieces. Come on, get it open. Easy, Mark. Let me take a second. A blue velvet box. That's what the kid said. The size of a cigar box. Keep your shirt. Huh? I'll find it if it's here. There it is. Okay. All right, hand it over. What's your hurry? I'm as much interested in what's in here as you are. Look, I got news for you, Cruz. You're not taking it out of here. What? I'm taking the Queen Cruise, and I'm leaving you behind. Oh, you dirty... Put away that rod. Look, Jenny wants it that way, Cruz. It's too bad, pal. Give me the Queen. Dirty double-crossing. You and Jenny ain't gonna cross me up. Mark out. For the love of... Cruz, look! At the top of the stairs, Cruz, look! <laughs> Monk and Cruz stand in the depths of the cellar, staring up at the head of the stairs in horror. We'll hear what happens next in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the Jeweled Queen. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Glenter. As Monk and Cruz stand transfixed in the cellar of the National Chess Club... Nick whispers to Patsy, who stands at the head of the stairs in a glowing green drape. And Patsy... Cruz, look! To the top of the stairs, look! It's a dame. She's coming down the stairs. This is coming down towards us. Hey, wait a minute, Monk. She... She looks like... Holy smokes, it's Jenny. Hey, for the love of mud, babe, what are you trying to do? Play the Phantom of the Opera? That ain't Jenny. Sure it is, I can see her face. It can't be a fool. No! Let go of my arm. I'm not dying that gun of you crazy. It can't be Jenny. Jenny's dead. She, she's dead? How do you know that, Cruz? Carter. How do you know Jenny's dead? Only the man who killed her could know that. But, but if Jenny's dead, who's this? My assistant, Patsy Bowen, made up to look like Jenny. In this bad light, she was able to fool you, just as I planned. Cruz... You killed Jenny! Yeah, wise guy. You thought you was going to cross me up with her, huh? Make a sucker out of me like she made out of Hopkins. Well, I showed you, and I'll show you more. Oh, I'm quiet, you... Cruz. It's too late. Oh. Don't howl, Alfred. That shot just went through your arm. It'll heal by the time you're due to take 40,000 volts sitting down. <laughs> That's right, Patsy. The old story of thieves falling out. Huh? What do you mean, Nick? Well, Cruz knew he was being double-crossed by Jenny and Monk, so he decided to return the favor and double-cross them. Oh. Well, is that why he went back and killed Hawthorne after Monk made the deal? Tried to frame Monk by dropping that medallion. Mm-hmm. Then to fix Jenny, he strangled her and left her in my car. And in that way, he figured Monk would take the rap for Hawthorne's murder and Jenny would be dead and both would be out of his way. Exactly. Oh. He'd collect the jewel queen and live happily ever after. Golly. Nick, I still don't understand how I solved the case. Why, Patsy, you did it when you saw that smudge of makeup on my arm. Will you please explain? I most certainly will explain. Patsy, the only person who could have touched me while I was in the monk club, who had makeup on his hand, was Cruz. Remember I told you how he knocked my arm? Yeah, just before you hit him and knocked him down. That's right. Well, he must have smudged my arm with makeup, which means he must have got it on his hands from Jenny's neck. <sighs> well, I'll be darned. So he had to be the man who strangled her. Yeah, but what about the jewel queen? The jewel queen goes to monk. He bought it legally, so he's entitled to it. Oh, shut. Oh, don't feel bad, Patsy. If you want one, I'll buy you a dozen tomorrow. A dozen? At the price? Mr. Monk is out $6,000, dear. 
The velvet box contained one very elaborate chess queen made of wood. Value, about $1.50. The... Then it wasn't the real jewel queen? No, Patsy, it wasn't. Queen Elizabeth's chess piece is still at large, somewhere in the wide, wide world. Well, maybe Cruz will be able to ask Her Majesty where it is after he sits down in the hot seat. Why, Patsy, that's not a nice thing to imply. It isn't? Why not? Well, I certainly hope good Queen Bess isn't in the same place Cruz is going to. <laughs> Besides, by then it'll be too late to do him any good. <laughs> Well, Nick, it's time you told us something about the adventure that new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week. Right you are, Bob. It's a story which began with the theft of a priceless Egyptian relic from the art museum one night. And during the robbery, the watchman was killed in a strange and mysterious way. Yes, and it took a device which records earthquakes to catch the murderer. Oh, hold on a minute, Nick. I don't get the connection between such a device and an Egyptian relic. <laughs> oh, well, neither did the killer, Bob. Not until it was all over. Uh, what do you call this story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Exploded Alibi. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. <laughs> <laughs>